The issue of, of imports uh, actually deserves a little bit of um, a deep dive. And as you know, we've always had 10 to 12 percent as uh, the penetration rate of imports into our markets. And typically that has been in areas or in steel grades that none of the local manufacturers produce. What's happened in the last few years is that this 10 to 12 percent number has crept up to something around 16 to 18 percent. Primary steel imports in the first half reached a high at an estimated 650,000 tons, some 40% up on the same period in 2012. Not surprisingly, flat products constituted the majority of this, most, almost 80% of total import volumes. Clearly, in this particular time, we can isolate the reason it was a fire in Fundibill Park, but there are other things that have been going on uh, in, in this area. If you look at finished products, um, that's been on, on the increase for a number of years now. And our estimation for this first half is that there was a 7% increase in finished product imports, equating to 22,000 tons, the main one being, in fact, tubes uh, and pipes. Supply disruptions, clearly, uh, the big catastrophic events at AsloMetal have not helped. The 2011 dust catcher collapse was one. We did recover market share after that, but clearly now with the fire also coming two years later, the market would therefore be importing more product that is to be expected. Expected. The exchange rate volatility is a big, big factor. So where the rand, in periods where the rand has strengthened, we've seen imports flood into the country. We remember well where in one particular quarter we saw something like 20% of, of imports coming in, and it was just on the back of a combination of steel price volatility and exchange rate moving in a positive direction for imports. The absence of trade barriers is a distinguishing feature of the South African steel market and replicated in very, very few other markets around the world and certainly not in emerging markets and certainly not within the BRICS uh, set of countries. With the steel industry globally suffering from excess capacity, you can well imagine that small, a small open economy would be of huge interest to global steel producers, and that turns out to be the case. And finally, such a topic would not be complete without talking about Chinese uh, subsidies. This is a problem worldwide. It's not a problem just for South Africa. It's just that we are a market of particular interest to Chinese producers, especially on the finished product side.